you mentioned that the government is the driving force. I would say that the Ukrainian people, they are the driving force, I and mean, we are just the drivers as the government. Uh, let me focus and uh, uh, describe several issues I wanted to underline. First of all, let me start with the military situation and security situation in the East. Uh, today in the morning we got the reports that uh, Russian-led terrorists renewed their offensive and more than 32 attacks happened in the last 24 hours. So we still have this so-called means deal on the table, and we still believe that the means deal is the only solution, but chances to implement, to implement entirely the means deal are not very high as were expected. Uh, so in terms of military uh, expectations, uh, we started together with our American friends to train Ukrainian military and Ukrainian National Guard in order to increase durability of Ukrainian military and to contain and to deter Russians. We do understand that the best way to resolve this conflict via the diplomatic efforts, but these diplomatic efforts have to be underpinned and supported by the st strong Ukrainian military and strong Ukrainian army. So I want to raise once again the question of not only training to the Ukrainian military, but launching a large-scale program training and equip, including the supply of defensive weapons for the Ukrainian army. Uh, <clears throat> we urge Russian Federation to implement the means deal. It all depends personally on President Putin, whether is he willing to reach the peace and entire, entirely implement and enforce the means deal. Uh, my take is that Russia is not eager, and this is not the desire of Russia to have peace and stability neither in Ukraine nor in Europe. Uh, it's so important for us to have a very strong statement and strong stance of all G7 member states, and uh, we commend uh, the statement made by G7 leaders clearly saying that uh, no lift of sanctions until Russia entirely and completely implements the means deal. Uh, let me just focus on what's in my mind means deal means. That when Putin and his Russian-led terrorists just get out of Ukraine. This is, this is the ultimate goal of the means deal. Uh, the key preconditions are to seal the border, to pull back forces, and to stop the supply of uh, weaponry, artillery, and uh, lethal aid to Russian-led terrorists. This conflict has a tremendous negative implications over Ukrainian economy. But despite this, we are still floating. And even more, uh, we are doing quite well in terms of budget revenues. The government uh, is constantly paying all social expenditures, all wages, all salaries, all pensions. Uh, we entirely overhauled Ukrainian tax system. We decentralized and devoted an additional powers to the local communities. I mean, budgetary decentralization uh, then it, that increased budget revenues of the local communities by 35 percent, despite the fact that we lost 20 percent of Ukrainian economy last year. And it severely hampered the Ukrainian economic output. Uh, you are probably well aware that in the first quarter of this year, uh, the economy shrunk by 17.6 percent. Well, and that's due to the fact that we lost Crimea, we lost uh, part of Donetsk and Lugansk, and these were the most heavily uh, developed industrial sectors in Ukraine. Uh, we uh, entirely overhauled Ukrainian energy sector and we eliminated all these tycoons and middlemen that existed like vampires sitting on Ukrainian na uh, naphtha gas sector, including Mr. Firtash, who is under FBI investigation. And we believe that uh, this Ukrainian tycoon has to be brought to justice in the United States. Uh, <coughs> we are doing our best to tackle corruption to tackle corruption on the highest level and to tackle so-called petty corruption on the level of inspectors, customs officers, police officers, prosecutors, judges. So uh, a very comprehensive agenda of uh, anti-corruption program is already in place. Uh, you are well aware that uh, the government launched a four-year EFF program with the uh, IMF together with the IMF, and uh, we are grateful to the support of the IMF and G G7 member states, including the United States of America and our European friends and another contributor. So we expect to get up to $25 billion in the forthcoming four years, but the gap is much bigger, much bigger. 
Despite the fact that the government has frozen all social expenditures, we shut down a number of entitlement programs, we did everything we can to fix the budget gap, we still ha need an enormous, an additional enormous amount of financial support. As you are well aware, this money goes directly to our creditors, so we can't spend this cash for neither for social expenditures nor for military expenditures, so we are doing it by our own. This year, the government uh, increased the budget expenditures, the military budget, up to 5% of GDP. This war cost us thousands of human lives. So we lost, the death toll is about 1,800 of Ukrainian soldiers and uh, more than 8,000 uh, civilians due to the Russian-led aggression. And uh, this war cost us from 5 to $7 million per day, which is a huge amount of cash for the Ukraine, which is in a very complicated financial situation. Uh, so, Ukrainian project uh, is to be not just a Ukrainian one. This is to be the world project, the project of the free world. If we succeed, this will be the best answer to a uh, dictatorship regime of President Putin, that the free world supports Ukraine and uh, that we are ready to stay united and uh, to respond strongly, boldly and wisely, uh, tackling Russian-led aggression. Uh, so in, in this case, we heavily rely on our joint and concerted actions with the United States, with the European Union, and uh, with another G7 member states uh, who are keen to support Ukraine and uh, to de-escalate the situation and actually to make Russia first to pay the price and then to obey an international law and order. 